Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to episode six of our Firebase tutorial on how to create our real-time chat application. Hope everyone is doing all right and is ready to do a little bit more coding today. So why don't we quickly go into the simulator here and talk about what we did in the last episode. So last time we were able to click on this little dragon puppy guy, bring up a UI picker uh, controller and click on an image right here. Let's select a brand Stark, choose, and upon registering a brand Stark as our new user here with a fake email like that, we were able to register this entire user, give him the image that we uploaded and associate his account with this image right here. So we have brand Stark and this profile image URL is the image that belongs to this user now. Okay. So let's see, slide that guy over there. And what is it that we want to do today, right? Well, today's gonna to be very interesting because we're gonna actually go over how to uh, implement the functionality that downloads the image from the profile image URL and put it onto the left of our user right here. So in other words, we want to be able to click on this new message controller and download the profile for our users in this screen. All right, let's cancel out of there and let's bring this guy to the top right. I'm gonna run this bit of code here. And all right, so make sure to watch the last episode that is available in the description below. Uh, it's very useful and you probably won't be able to follow along that much if you are just uh, watching this episode right now. Um, all right, and also we will be talking about how the network is affected every time we download one of these image URLs. Okay, going into new message controller now, we can actually take a look at what we need to do to download that image. So let's head over to new message controller, cell for row at index path. And I'm gonna show you what we can do here. So cell dot image view. Image view is a, a default uh, image view that is inside of one of these UI table view cells. So I'm going to access it directly and set an image to something, perhaps image named something we will get right now. So what is this image? Well, I'm going to drag in an image from my folder here. So I have this Ned Stark image dragged in. Let's get the name of that and back. And then I'm going to paste it right there. So if I run this code now, you'll see the application load with all of our users in a table view, and then we'll get to see the Ned Stark image right there. So I bump it up, let's see that big, and we get that image, so pretty good. And how do we download these new images from our users now? Well, it's pretty easy. If we, uh, if we get the image URL like this, so if let user oh, profile image URL equals user, dot profile image URL. So this will safely unwrap this value here, which is fetched from this user property or user variable. And it is this property that is a string inside of our user model right here. So let's go back and see how we can actually execute an NS URL session, shared session data task with this completion handler guy right there. And we're gonna execute this to download the image what do we need here? For the first parameter, we need a URL. So NS URL like this with the string constructor. And what is this string? Well, simply profile image URL. And we actually have to unwrap it like this. So this is a little unsafe, so I'm gonna show you how to do that uh, in just a little bit, or how to make it a little bit safer. So completion handler and enter, data, response, and error. So let's just be our, a little bit safer with our error checking. If let or if error equals nil, not equals nil, we're going to simply print out the error and then return out of the download. So this means that uh, download hit an error. So let's return out. And here is where the download is successful. So to set the image, we can say sell that image view that image equals UI image data and data unwrap with a bang. And now we can actually run the application. So the common mistake that I always 
uh, run into here is to actually run this without the resume. So if I do this, uh, Brand Stark or this Ned Stark character does it, and we actually need to hit resume here in order to actually fire off this URL session request. So let's see what that does. So let me hit that guy and then wait for the images to show up, but it doesn't show up because we haven't actually uh, run this image setter on the main queue. So let's do that right here, dispatch async, dispatch get main queue, and hit the completion handler. And so if we set the uh, image view here instead, we'll get the images to show up right away whenever the download is complete. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like by launching the app right now, hitting the new, and right away you'll see the images load up like that. So it doesn't take as long as it did previously. All right, so what do we want to do now? Well, I actually want to show you a couple of things first. So you see how these images are kind of squished right here. The aspect ratio is a little off. You can actually set the cell.imagery.content mode equals scale aspect fill, and then we'll see what the images look like right now. So is it the new message controller right here? Downloads the images. And now it's being stretched out like this. And we have this inconsistent spacing between each of the images. So what is happening here is that this cell.image view, the default image view that comes with our cell, it behaves very, very strangely. And it doesn't actually uh, respect the spacing that we need in order to have a consistent layout like this. So why don't we uh, provide our own image view instead of using this default one right here. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that by modifying this user cell right here. Remember, user cell is the actual cell that we've registered with our table view here. So we can modify this cell to actually include an image view like this. Profile image view is of type image view. Let's use this closure block to declare an image view like this, and we'll just return it as our closure return value. Now this will give us the image view right here. And if we set image view dot image equals this UI image uh, named Ned, say Ned Stark is the file name. We can actually now add it into our cells sub view hierarchy like this. So add sub view, uh, profile image view like so. And then we need to add some constraints to put it into this cell. So in other words, let me just now comment out that code right there and comment out this code right here. And then we can run this application and it'll revert back to the original state where the images are not showing and the labels are flushed or flushed to the left side. And here we go. So how do we add this profile image view in here now? Well, we can add it with some iOS 9 constraints. So it's iOS 9 constraints uh, constraint anchors, and we need x, y, width, and height anchors like this. So the first value is, let me just shrink this guy down. The x value for the profile image view will be right here. So let's use a value of profile image view dot left anchor, uh, constrained to anchor with a constant, and this will be self dot left anchor and this constant will be eight. So I'm gonna give it eight pixels from the left right there. And then we have to, let's see, let's just set active equals true for this first one. And now we need to set the Y anchor like this. So the Y anchor, the Y anchor value will be center Y dot constrained to anchor. And this will be self dot center Y anchor. So that's going to place this image view right in the center right there. And now we need the width anchor of this profile image view. Let me just get rid of that project navigator and get back down here. Dot, let's see, with anchor. And this is just going to constrain to some kind of constant value that I'll set to be perhaps uh, 40. Yeah, 40 sounds good. And for the height, let's just use the exact same value of 40. And now I need to do a couple of things. So first run this and it's not going to exactly show up, I don't believe. I'm gonna show you how to fix that right here. So it doesn't show up and 
we get this huge, massive warning message saying that constraints aren't actually working properly because we have not set this translates uh, property here to false. And then we also need to set these actives to true for each one of these anchors. So quite an annoying thing to do, but we have to do it nonetheless. So running this now, we're going to see the imagery show up on the left of the two labels. Okay, so that's a good start. So that's what we get there. Now the labels are being hidden behind the uh, image view that we just added. So let's go ahead and fix that by overriding a, a method up here called layout subviews. And so what goes in here? So first we need to call super layout subviews. We can actually change the text label rather easily if we just change the frame of text label frame equals CG rect right there. So remember this text label corresponds to the top label that says net start. And this X value will just be a value of let's say 56. So 56 right there will give us uh, eight pixels from here, 40 pixels from there and eight pixels from, from there. So that'll give us 56. And this value right here will be text label dot frame dot origin dot Y. And there we go. So we need to unwrap this like that. And then for these next values, we'll just call the width, let's see, width from the frame. And this will be text label, same thing, uh, frame dot height, like so. So let's run this now. And we're gonna see that this text label is going to be placed to the right of the image view right now. So running that, we get the text label right here. So that's where that text label is. And let's just move the bottom detail label exactly the same way with a detail text label. And we just need to replace all of these values right there, text label, text label, all right. So let's run this now. You'll see that our table view cells are now fully customized to lay out our cells uh, a little better than the default image view. So let's just bump this up and that's what that looks like. And I want to make it so that it has this corner radius now. So I will modify profile image views corner radius like this image view dot layer dot corner radius equals perhaps 20. And we'll also have to need to set layer dot mask to bounds equal to true. So the value of 20 comes from half of this constant constraint right here. And let's click on that and we get this now. How do I provide a little bit more spacing for these image views? Uh, so I'm gonna go back to my table view controller up here. I'm gonna implement a method called height, say height for row, and it's returned 56. So let's see what that does. All right, seems like I am missing an override. I really feel like Swift should autocomplete with that override, but I'm not sure why it does not. Now clicking there, we get taller cells and we are pretty much uh, closer, a lot closer to this than we are before. So how do we actually get these cells to load these images now? Well, back in our cell for row uh, method call here, let's just remove this bit of comment because we don't need that anymore. We can also remove the default image view code. And inside of here, we actually need to call cell dot profile the profile image view so the reason why it's not showing up though is because our cell let's see cell right here if i click on there is of type ui table view cell so why don't we downcast this as a user cell which is this class right here so user cell now will contain a Let's see, profile, Let's see profile image view. So that already comes up. However, you see how we get all these question marks here and we need to actually unwrap it. So why don't we unwrap it with a bang right there? And then we get just a cell like that and setting the image equal the, let's see, let me just cut that out, paste that there, delete that. And I'm gonna do run my application now. I'm gonna show you that the images will be fetched and put into our cell like this. So cell, cell, there you go. And all right, so pretty good 
Now I can remove the default image of Ned Stark like that. And let's see, what do I want to do? So I actually want to provide a little bit more spacing between these two labels. And how do I do that from within my user cell class? Well, to push this label up and push this label down, all we need to do is to subtract perhaps two pixels from the Y value of text label and then add two pixels to the value of detail text label, uh, detail text label. And so that'll give us a little bit more spacing between these two labels right there. See the gap has actually widened. And that makes your app a little bit more polished in my opinion. Spacing is rather important to me at least. So let's see what we can do now. Okay, so I actually want to show you a, a problem, a pretty severe issue if you increase this height of the table view cell by let's say twice the amount, or roughly twice, 200. I'm gonna go here and you see how these images are coming in and then they flash in and then they flash out and then it gets reloaded like that. So the issue here is that we are constantly downloading all these images over and over again. And the problem occurs if you bring back your project navigator, go to this uh, thing it's called the debug navigator. And you look at the network tab right here. And if you scroll the if you scroll the table view up and down, you see that per second you're actually downloading quite a bit of data. Essentially, we are constantly calling the bit of code that fetches the image via NS URL session. So you can imagine how much data you're eating up on your user's data plan if you don't manage this correctly. So the question is, how do we actually go about managing this image fetch inside of new message controller? Well, the proper way of doing this is to actually cache these images inside of your, uh, your code. So how do we cache things? So caching is just a process of keeping the things in memory so that you can fetch them later. And the easiest way to cache this image is to actually just create a, an extension. So I'm gonna hit new, uh, new group. I'm gonna call this group helpers. And inside of helpers belongs this, uh, let's see, this file called extensions. Extensions is just a very simple file that will import UI kit first. And then I'll call extension uh, UI image view. And let's just do some caching here. So I've already went through this example of caching images in a, another video in my YouTube app series. So why don't we just do that quickly again in this bit of code. And let's call this function uh, load image using cache uh, with URL string like this, URL string will be this string right there. I'm gonna paste all that code that I just had inside of this method here. So this profile image URL will just be this URL string there. And now we need to fix this bit of code, which we need to actually set the image upon finishing the download of this image. And we simply fix that with a self.image equals the new image right there. Now I'm going to go back to my code here I'm going to comment all of this out. And in here, I'll just simply say cell.profile image view. See it load, you see how it doesn't come up. We actually need to build load using uh, cache. And this URL string is just simply profile image URL, like so. And let's just see what we can do now. So I'm gonna run and it builds successfully. And now we can perform this exact same download and we'll see that the problem is still there where the, the network is constantly firing off downloads every time we are scrolling up and down. So that's the issue that we're trying to fix right here. So the constant flashing is a bit annoying. And we need to go into the extension file and introduce a cache right above. I'm gonna say let image cache equals uh, NS cache like this. And this cache will just serve as the memory bank for all of our images being downloaded in this line right here. So how do we actually cache these images? Well, we'll just say this. Uh, if let, well, I'm gonna show you why it doesn't work with this call first. So image cache, like this right here. 
uh, set object. And this object right here needs to be a non-optional. So the problem is that if we set an image like this, UI image, uh, perhaps let's do this. Maybe it's more obvious. I'm going to cut that and paste that there. And we need to set this uh, object to this image with this key of URL string, like so. And the reason why this doesn't work is because this expects a non-optional image. And to do this a little bit safer, we will say if let image equals that. So this image is actually a bad name for our image right here because image view also has another property called image. So why don't we do this downloaded image equals this image here. And we'll set downloaded image inside of here via this call like that. So now we are good. And we also need to set the image right here. So self.image equals downloaded image right there. And if we run this now, all these images are going to be cached inside of this image cache right here. So I'm going to hit download or I'm hit the new message and it's going to download. You see how the image cache, so let me see if I can get PO image cache and initialize. So we do that, that, that. So we're putting things into the cache and we get our cache with some values in it. So how do we get out these values? Well, first let me show you the network tab again. You see that the network is still going off like crazy here because it's constantly downloading new images from Firebase storage. So I'm going to simply fetch the cached images up here. All right. So here is what we need to do. So fetch, let's see, check uh, cache for image first right here. We'll say if let cached image equals image cache, and we'll get the object for key. Key is this URL string we pass in up here as our parameter, and we'll close it off with, uh, let's see, self.image equals cached image right there. And we'll just return out. Let's see, return like that. Try to run. And the reason why we cannot run it right now is because it is not a UI image type. So let's cast it as an optional UI image and run this application now. So get rid of that space. And so here is otherwise fire off a new download. And then we can look at this network tab again, new, uh, new message, and you'll see what happens. So let's see, I am constantly getting this error for my application because I actually need to uh, log in again. So test 51 gmail.com, Q, 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 Q. And the reason why I'm getting this is because I'm, I have two or three projects using Firebase right now. And similar doesn't really like that in my project. So you see how the flashing is gone and the network is no longer being used every time I scroll up and down. So it's constantly staying at zero right here. So if I click in there, you see no network is being used. This per second value is staying at zero and it's caching our images properly and not firing off the new downloads. So that's how the extension works like this. Now there's additional things that we can do with this cache that we'll probably go into in a later video. All right, so that looks pretty good. Why don't we shrink the new message controller uh, table view cell back down to, what is it, 56 perhaps? And we should be okay. All right, let's run the application now and hit this new message controller and we get all these images there. And so that's pretty good. Uh, let's see, let's see, what do we want to do here? So the other thing that we need to do inside of this extension is to actually set the image to nil every time we run this call. In other words, let me see how I can illustrate this a little better. New message controller. Let's bring this value back up to 100 here and run the application. So what I mean is because this table view reuses cells, if I click here, it'll download all these images. But the moment I scroll down, it's going to reuse some of these images like that. So you'll see some little minor bit of flashing occur 
at the bottom as well. So let me just show you that one more time. Running the application, we'll get the new message controller and hit that. And just concentrate on the bottom couple of cells. So you see how it kind of like flashes in? And that's because we need to set this uh, image right here. So self.image equal nil. That'll blank out the image and just show a bit of white space before the image can actually download. So let's come here, new message controller. We'll see the blank images, blank right here, and we don't get the flashing anymore. So one thing that's also advantageous about this cache is that every time you cancel out of the screen, you cancel out, you bring it back, the images are already downloaded inside of our uh, new message controller. Uh, more specifically, it's downloaded inside of this image cache right here. And one thing that I probably need to fix, I think, is the aspect ratio of these images right there. So why don't we go back and fix the ratio a little bit by going to new message controller, and then we'll go to profile image view here. Image view dot content mode equals scale aspect fill, like that. So let's run that and see how close we are to getting a good uh, width and height aspect ratio for the user image. So that looks a lot better. And uh, let's bring this value back up to, let's see, 56 perhaps. And running this, we'll get something a little better. Actually, why don't we try to increase the height of the image view as well? So. This looks a little small for my taste. Why don't we bump this up to perhaps uh, 48? Let's see, 48. And the corner radius needs to match appropriately to, appropriately to half of that. And we now bump this up to perhaps 64, 64, uh, 48, 64, perhaps 72. So 72. And so this is just a slight modification to make our application look just a little bit better. I'm going to click on this guy and we get the images right there. So that looks a lot nicer, a lot more legible. And we need to now push the label to the side a little bit. So instead of 56, we'll use uh, 64 and 64. Then I'll push it to the right eight pixels to match the spacing that we have inside of our cells. So that's how you would kind of lay out all of your cells a little bit more, uh, a little nicer in terms of spacing like that. And all right, that's about it. All right, that about wraps it up for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson on how to monitor the network traffic on your devices and also how to re-lay out your uh, subviews inside of a UI table view cell. And finally, make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed today's content. And also hit the subscribe button as well. It does really help me out. All right, in the next episode, we'll take a look at two things. First, I'll show you guys how to set up your user's profile image in the nav bar. And secondly, we'll fix a bug that is occurring every time we log out, log back in as a different user. And then the nav bar title needs to be refreshed based on this new user. And finally, you can download the project by clicking the link on the screen. You can follow me on Twitter at BuildThatApp. And also, if you're interested in learning more about iOS development, you can click on the following three links on the screen to go directly to the playlist on my YouTube channel. That's about it, guys. Keep on coding, and I'll see you next time.